What's up squad, my name is ESO and welcome back to the channel. In this video I will be showing you how to get all 14 Dragon Priest masks in Skyrim Special Edition. And it's also going to be the exact same if you have the original Skyrim as well. So the Dragon Priest masks are powerful enchanted helmets that are worn by Dragon Priest bosses that you'll find all over Skyrim and Solstheim. You basically have to go around and kill these Dragon Priests to get their masks and each one is unique. And there's even a secret puzzle to unlock a hidden mask that I'll be showing you in this video. And I'll actually be giving you guys an overview of what mask is good for what character build and which ones you might want to get first. So the first 9 masks I'm going to be showing you are needed to unlock the secret mask number 10. So bear that in mind as you watch this video. But let's start off with number 1 in the list, Hevnorak. This mask has a sleek black appearance with a red glow. The headpiece actually counts as heavy armour and it has an armour rating of 23. But despite its cool appearance, it's actually one of the worst of all the Dragon Priest masks in the game, because all its enchantment does is makes you immune to disease and poison damage. Now while being immune to poison is quite useful when you're fighting things like spiders, it's mostly not really going to be very helpful to you. And it can be found here in the ancient Nordic ruin of Valtham, which is located here on the map. And I've actually made a walkthrough for each location for each Dragon Priest mask and they can all be found down below in the description. Now let's take a look at the second mask on this list, Croesus. Now this mask is absolutely fantastic for a sneaky character. It actually counts as light armour and has an armour rating of 21. The mask itself is enchanted with a 20% bonus to lockpicking, archery and alchemy. So it basically makes lockpicking easier, your bows do more damage and your alchemy potions and poisons are now 20% more powerful. So it's fantastic for an archer using poisons as damage. And you can get this mask over here on the map at Sheer Point, which is actually on top of a mountain. Do take care when you come over here though, because the Dragon Priest is actually accompanied by a dragon as well. So prepare yourself for a little bit of a fight here. Next up at number 3, we have Morakai, and this one is fantastic for a mage type character. It also counts as light armour, but unfortunately, like most mage armour, it only has an armour rating of 5, which is pretty pitiful compared to any other Dragon Priest mask. But the enchantment on the mask makes you regenerate Magicka 100% faster. So now you'll be regenerating Magicka twice as fast as you were before, which is obviously fantastic for mages. And if you pair that with the Arch Mage robes, which you get at the end of the Mage Guild questline, you'll actually have a 15% reduction to all spells and you'll regenerate Magicka 200% faster, which is incredible. Anyway, you'll find this mask here on the map in Labyrinthian, and you'll gain access to this location during the Mage Guild questline, if you haven't already. Next up at number 4, we have Nakrin. This Dragon Priest mask counts as heavy armour, and has an armour rating of 23. It also gives you plus 50 Magicka, and reduces the cost of any destruction or restoration spells that you use by 20%. So this is actually fantastic for a mage build, especially if you decide to pick a high elf, because then you'll be starting the game with 200 magicka, which actually puts you 10 levels ahead at the start of the game, because usually you can only give yourself plus 10 magicka every time you level up. So you can find this dragon priest mask just here on the map in Skaldathan, the only issue with this is that you only actually get to this location at the end of the main quest line, so you'll probably be around level 15 or 20 by the time you get it. In at number 5 we have Otar, an amazing yellow mask with this sort of green tinge to it. And in my opinion it is a solid mask, especially if you're playing a warrior character. Now this mask actually counts as heavy armour, and once again it has an armour rating of 23. Its unique enchantment though gives you a 30% resistance to fire, frost and shock damage. So you pretty much now have a 30% resistance to all magic types. And this is great for a warrior because you can't block magical attacks with your shield. 
And guys, if you follow my guide in the description on how to get full Daedric armor, then you can actually get Daedric gauntlets, boots, and a shield enchanted with 70% resist frost, fire, and shock, and then you'll be immune to all magic types, which is pretty cool, right? So make sure you check out my full Daedric armor guide down below in the description. You can actually find Otar's mask just here on the map though in this Nordic ruin called Ragnvald, northeast from Markov. And guys, if you're finding this guide helpful, please do give the video a like because that really helps me out. But next up guys, in at number 6, we have Ragot, a pale green mask. And this mask is going to be really good for a dual wielding warrior type character. It counts as heavy armour, so it's going to give you an armour rating of 23 again, and the enchantment on this mask actually increases your stamina by 70 points, which is going to be useful for running around and exploring, and also blocking or power attacks. So to get Ragot's mask, you must find it in Fallholst. And there's a really interesting quest for this one, guys, and you can check out my walkthrough for it in the description below. But next up, at number 7, we have Vokken, a blue mask with a blue enchanted glow. Once again, the mask is a heavy armor piece, so it has an armor rating of 23. And if we put this mask on, it will give you a 20% reduction to your conjuration, illusion, and alteration. And this mask is especially useful for conjurists or illusionists, because those spells usually cost you a lot of magicka to cast. But you can find Vokan's mask just here in Highgate Ruins. here on the map. Next up on the list, in at number 8, we have Volsung. Now this is what I consider to be the ultimate utility mask. It counts as light armour, and therefore has an armour rating of 21. But that's not really important, because this is the mask no matter what type of character you're playing. It's enchanted to increase your carry weight by 20, and then it also makes your prices 20% better, so you get more gold for selling items, and you don't use as much gold for buying things. You'll basically want to put on this mask before you buy or sell anything. And then finally guys, it lets you breathe underwater. So it's kind of like an all-round flexible mask that's going to be useful in lots of occasions. But to actually acquire it, you must come here on the map to Vault Sky. And once again guys, this is a pretty cool dungeon that I recently did a walkthrough on, so make sure you check it out if you're interested. But next on the list, in at number 9, we have the Wooden Mask. And this mask can be found here on the map in Labyrinthian. Now this mask is actually terrible, it only has an armor rating of 2 and it doesn't even have an enchantment at all. So ESO, why do we need it? Well my friends, this mask is actually the key to the secret puzzle and it's the missing piece that we need to unlock Mask 10. So firstly we have to come here to the Dragon Priest Sanctuary, which of course is located in the Labyrinthian location, as I showed you on the map. So we're just going to head over to the Dragon Priest Sanctuary now. And once you are inside, you'll find a skeleton next to this wooden mask. And guys, if you're actually interested in the lore and story behind the wooden mask, you can actually just read this note here. This is from the perspective of a mercenary. It seems like an easy enough job. Groz and me done plenty like it before. Some chinless Breton wants bodyguards for a trip into the mountains. Fine, easy clink for us. He goes on about this twice forsaken mask of his the whole way, of course. Got a pretty good laugh when Groz snatched it and put it on her face. He then threatened to fire us for that one. Not smart out here on your own. He realised that right fast and shut up about not paying. So we got here, he thumbs through some papers and mutters to himself. Never you mind me and Groz had to cut through ten stinking trolls just to get him here. And without so much as a warning, poof, he put on that mask and vanished. Could have put my hands on his throat one moment, the next, he's not so much as thin air. Well, after a while, we didn't know what to do, and Groz picks her gear up to head home, when poof, back, that mask in his hand, 
begs us not to leave and say he needs us to wait. This is what he's paying us for. Then puts the mask back on his face and he's gone again. I'd seen cloaks of invisibility before, but a few swings of my fist provided he wasn't pulling that one. Nothing there to be hit. He shows up again, tells us he just needs one more time has to figure out something about the other masks, and vanishes once again. That was yesterday, and I'm done with this twiddling my thumbs and writing letters to myself. We're leaving come sunrise, and if he shows up again, I promise Azura I'm putting this dagger through his chest to keep him in one place. We'll pull more loot off him dead than he could have paid alive, but not worth the mask. That cursed thing can stay and rot with him, and the trolls right here. So as you can see, it looks like this guy died ages ago with a knife plunge through his chest. But it gives us a clue on what we have to do. So we're just going to put on this wooden dragon priest mask and it will actually send us back in time to before the destruction of the Romjunar Sanctuary. And wearing this mask lets us see the secret shrine in front of us. And as you can see, there are eight busts carved from stone. And we can put all eight of the Dragon Priest masks that we've collected so far onto this shrine. But guys, once we've put all eight of the masks here, the final mask, mask number 10, will be revealed. And guys, do not worry, you can just take back all of the Dragon Priest masks from the stand once you've completed the ritual. You won't lose any of the masks. So now, of course, we've unlocked the 10th mask on this list, Kanarik. And as you can see, this golden mask is unique in appearance. It also has horns, which look pretty awesome. Once you are wearing it though, you'll also notice that the colour scheme of the hood is in fact different, because it has a gold trim instead of the usual sort of grey-brown one. The mask itself counts as heavy armour, giving you the best armour rating of all the Dragon Priest masks we've looked at so far. That's an armour of 24. It also has a unique enchantment that basically refills your health whenever you're low. And when it does this, it will also damage any nearby enemies to you. It's a pretty damn useful and powerful effect that has a chance to activate whenever you're low on health. And there's actually no limit on how many times this effect will activate a day. So that makes it incredibly useful in saving your life multiple times. This mask actually also has another secret power that everyone seems to miss because it doesn't actually say it does this. But on very rare occasions, the mask will actually summon a dragon priest to help you in combat. And the dragon priest it summons will then also summon a storm atronaut and reanimate dead bodies and also use the ice spike spell. So it's really powerful. And now guys, we've covered the 10 dragon priest masks that you can find in Skyrim. But there are, of course, still four more to find. And to obtain the next four Dragon Priest masks, we must get the Dragonborn downloadable content. But if you're playing on Skyrim Special Edition, you'll already have this pre-installed with the game. So now what we need to do to actually get these masks is come to the island of Solfine. And if you don't know how to get here, just check out the link below in the description for a guide on how to do it. It's really easy and you can do it at any level. So once we've arrived on the island, you'll have a new map. So now let me show you where to find the last four Dragon Priest masks. So, next up in the list, in at number 11, we have Arzidao's mask. Now these next masks have more of a different, more skeletal appearance to them than the ones before. And it actually counts as heavy armor and it gives us an armor rating of 23 again. But Azidao's mask actually has a unique enchantment that gives you a 50% resistance to fire and also gives you a 25% damage boost to all of your fire spells. And this also includes enchanted weapons with the fire damage enchantment, as well as the fire breath shout. So it's absolutely fantastic if you're roleplaying a pyro mage or something like that that just uses fire. But to actually find this mask, you must come over here to Kolb John Barrow. And this one is a nightmare to actually get. Because to actually get to the dragon priest that wears this mask, you'll need to excavate this too. And excavating will take a lot of gold and time. In fact, it will cost you a total of 9,000 gold to excavate the whole ruin. But you're going to find lots of unique items doing it, and also the quest behind it is really, really cool. But you'll find this mask at the end of this dungeon, and it probably is the second hardest mask to get in the entire game. 
Next up, at number 12 on the list, we have Dukan. Once again, this counts as heavy armor and it's going to have an armor rating of 23. But the mask itself gives you a 50% resistance to frost and boosts your frost spells by 25%. And once again, that also includes enchantments and shouts as well. So it's basically the Ice Mage version of the previous mask. I don't think this mask is as good though, because most things in Skyrim have a resistance to frost magic. So using frost magic just isn't as useful. The mask itself though can be found in the depths of White Ridge Barrow, which is located just here on the map. In at number 13, we have Zarkrisos, and this mask is also heavy armor with an armor rating of 23. Compared to the previous two masks, it's basically the shock magic version. So as you may have guessed, it gives you a 50% resistance to shock spells and boosts and boosts your own shock spells by 25%. The shock mask is actually really useful because have a resistance to shock damage, which makes it one of the most powerful spell types. But to get this piece of armor, you must come here on the map to Bloodscale Barrow, which you can access through the town of Raven Rock. It's definitely worth a visit anyway, because it also contains an amazing two-handed sword called the Bloodscale Blade. So make sure you check out my walkthrough of that location so you can pick up all the unique items here. But next, my comrades, next we have the final mask, number 14, the 14th mask. And of course, it is Mirax mask, worn by the only other existing Dragonborn in the game. And indeed, it is quite an incredible looking mask. It does look like it was influenced by Hermius Mora. Indeed, the mask does kind of represent the face of a seeker. Perhaps you now are the seeker of knowledge. And besides Kronak, this is the only mask in the game with a unique appearance to it. The mask though is rather interesting because its enchantment is actually level. So if you are between level 1 and 44, it has 23 armor and increases your magicka by plus 50 points which is actually worse than the Narkrin Dragon Priest mask that I mentioned earlier. If however you are between level 45 and 59, it will give you plus 60 magicka. And then if you're above level 60, it will give you plus 70 magicka. Now to be honest, I only think that the level 60 plus version is good, because that also gives you an armor rating of 27 as well, which is the best armor rating out of any of the other Dragon Priest masks in the game. Now depending on if your light armor skill or your heavy armor skill is higher, so say for example if your light armor skill is higher, Mirax Mask will be light armor for you, whereas if your heavy armor skill is better, it will be heavy armor. So it actually just depends on what your character is like. And to actually get this mask for yourself guys, you need to complete the Dragonborn main quest line. And you can find a walkthrough on that and all the other locations I've mentioned down below in the description. But I have another quick tip before you go guys. Because all the Dragon Priest masks here can in fact be worn with the Falma helmet, which gives you another 10 armor rating on top of the Dragon Priest mask. So that's pretty powerful. In fact, it's the best combination of headgear you can really have. You can also enchant your Falma helmet as well. So you can actually wear up to five enchantments at once, which is kind of ridiculous. And guys, make sure you smash that subscribe button if you haven't already so you don't miss any more upcoming daily Skyrim video guides that I'll be making because I got tons more on their way. And don't forget that you can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter so you get the latest updates as soon as I release a new video guide. But guys, thanks again for watching. My name is ESO and I will see you, loyal subscriber, in the next guide. Have a fantastic day and goodbye. Don't forget that you can receive text and or email notifications from my channel every time I release a new video. Underneath the video, just hit subscribe and then hit the bell next to it. You will now get notified as soon as I release a new video. Welcome to the ESO squad, guys.